been four months now that I am working on my game Lone Knight, which is a 2D Metroidvania that is uh, scheduled to be released this year on Steam. You can uh, check the link in the description if you want to wishlist it. Lone Knight is basically my dream game. That's the game that I was dreaming to play when I was like uh, a little kid and I was like playing Super Metroid on my Super Nintendo and I am making it using Godot 4. I started making it using uh, Godot 3 but the transition to Godot 4 has been actually quite, uh, quite, I will not say easy but way simpler than I thought it would be <laughs> so like that was a good surprise uh, but this video is uh, specifically about the saving system and in this video I'm going to talk about the saving system because the saving system for me has been something quite difficult to, to, to put into place because there were like no tutorial that was relevant for like uh, for, for making one so basically I've been uh, deep diving for like 3-4 days into how to do this or that and the documentation and finally I found my way this by, by the way is not a tutorial about how to make a saving system it's more a video where I break down how I've made mine keep in mind that there's not one way to make a saving system there's many of them but me I knew that I was uh, in need to have specific things into my saving system and one of them was that I don't want the game to auto save I want the player to be able to save only in specific spot a bit like what you have in like uh, Super Metroid and Hollow Knight uh, and so like uh, that's what I was looking to have and so for that I was in need to have like uh, something that was specific so that's what I've made and that's what we're gonna talk about now so the first thing I was looking to do was to have a saving system for my games. So uh, for that, what I've done was like I've created a node, an empty node, on which I have just I have uh, I've attached a script, and I call that node save manager, and that script is save uh, save and load, and that script is pretty simple but it took me quite some time to work out how to be able to save um, the, the game so I'm just gonna put it in full screen so I have created a variable called a load save game to and that is set up to false uh, by default and I've created a safe path that is user.savegame.json and that safe path is located into project open user data folder and here you can see that I have that safe path here that is opening this file. And this is my player, this is my elf, this is my position. Uh, so like that's what the the path is all about and I've saved it into like um, a, a variable so it's just a bit cleaner I don't have to put user uh, save game to JSON every time so then in the ready function what I what I have done is that I have created another, another variable file in which I am creating uh, my uh, text file so I say it's file access dot open I put my safe path as uh, one parameter and I put file access dot read as a second parameter this will make sure that it can read uh, the information that are inside my save file. And then I am calling a function that is called load data. Load data is here. And so when load data uh, is um, is uh, call load save game equal true and so then it opened the file and it read it and then it's uh, here it make a little check it say like if file uh, exists at safe path um, a variable json uh, and then we are parsing that uh, json file so we can just like read it so if i go back to my project open user data folder and i open that i'm gonna open it for me in visual studio code and here uh, it passed and so i can read uh, the data this is for loading but we need to have an actual function for saving and so here what I'm doing is like I'm creating a dictionary called data and here I am creating a list and that list is uh, sending a path uh, to my uh, actual function that save the, the, the data of my player so it's in my player script I come here and like if I scroll down I scroll down somewhere where is it uh, from to dictionary so here in that function we have um, I've created that function to dictionary that returns the position and the f that's the two information that I want to store about my player at the moment and so once I have uh, just give the access to that function to dictionary into my uh, data uh, list I can then create uh, a file and then write into it as you can see here file access dot write I give obviously the path of my of my save file so like that I only have one then I'm creating uh, a new JSON by storing it into a variable. I'm creating a second variable in which I say JSON string and then I call the function JSON.stringify data. I pass that, um, that variable data that I've created here 
into uh, the, the parentheses of stringify and then I say file store line and I, I just store JSON string and that's how I'm saving the game uh, and so I can do that with all the objects that I want to uh, to say for example if I had like like coins I will say like something like coin and then here I will just uh, call that and I will say uh, dollar sign uh, coin dot to dictionary because uh, that's what I will do like I will say uh, to a dictionary uh, so like this it's like it makes everything cleaner and everything like uh, uh, standardized but yeah I don't have that function at the, at the moment so that it will not work so I'm just gonna remove it and so once I have done that uh, I can save my game everywhere but then there will be a problem we will be able to save everywhere and that's not what I want I'm gonna show you I'm just gonna remove uh, this line here voila and I'm gonna keep this one so here you can see that for example uh, if I come here I've created a little variable that uh, print every time I'm like uh, I'm saving so if I click on C you can see here I've saved the game and if I come here I save the game and I don't want that I want to be able to save the game only when I'm like around that bench uh, and so for that I've created another function which is here uh, that, that function is called uh, underscore input event and here I'm checking if like there's any input that are pressed so here I'm calling my parameter event between parentheses here and say if event is action press and it's like a UI save so it's um, uh, a little input map that I've created where is it project setting uh, input map I've created my UI save right here and it's the, the key C so if it if UI save is uh, clicked, then it can save. But I don't want that. I want to be able to save when I'm saving uh, by clicking on my C key, but also when I'm around that bench. And so for that, basically what I've done is like I have a uh, here you can see global dot can save, and this make reference to my um, uh, global script. So I have a one uh, one script where I'm storing all my um, all my different things that I want to save, like for example my player lies, the checkpoint, the data, etc. And here I have a variable that is called can save, and it's set up to false by default. And that variable can save turns out to true when my uh, player is around the area of the bench. I'm going to show here. I just need to find the bench. So I click here. Voila. And here the bench have a script uh, attached. And so you can see var can save equal false. Uh, and so if I come here, if the player enter the area of the bench, global dot can save, uh, can save equal to true. And so when I'm around that area, uh, that variable is a, is a setup to true and then here all I need to do is just to copy that and to put it here and I say up voila, and end if global can save equal true and event is action press then it can uh, save and that's how I do it and so now if I go back to my uh, to my game So you can see here, I can't, I can't save, I'm tapping, but I can't save, but if I come here, then I can save the game. And if I reload the game, so if I reload the game, you can see that I'm uh, going back to here. Because I've created also in my input function, I've created an event, is action press UI restart, and then it just loads the dictionary, and that's it. So that's how I've made the uh, saving system. So that's it for me, I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope also that you like that format because I tried to make a new format where I can like show the progress I'm making into my game. I've never met devlog before, so I don't know if we can count this one as a devlog, but me I will. I want to keep track of the progress I'm making into my game and so that format is very good for me to, uh, to, to do that. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!